for now. Thank you. So about a week or two ago, I had the chance to go back to my old hometown of Lisbon Falls, Maine, as I mentioned earlier. And I've spent the better part of two decades, from the mid-70s to the mid-90s, living in this town. And there was a time, as happens in towns like this, where I pretty much knew everyone, at least their faces, and everyone, at least in some sense, knew me. I mean, I grew up in an actual small town. Technically, in fact, it's a village of a larger town. And it's about a tenth, tenth of the size of Natick, Massachusetts. I always find it funny the number of people here in Natick that I do not know and that I have never met before who like to tell me that in Natick everyone knows everyone else. In Lisbon Falls, everyone actually kind of did know each other. And if they didn't know each other, the degree of separation was pretty easy to discover. Now last week, I was back in town for Moxie Days, Moxie Festival, the annual celebration of this lovely regional novelty soft drink. And while I was there, well, I should tell you, there's actually a story about, a great story about how Moxie Festival came to be, but that's for, you know, a day with more people. I'm not judging you guys. But anyway, there's a great story about how Moxie Day comes to be, and I'm saving that, but today, what you need to know is that while I was there, everything in town seemed to be the same way it always had been when I was growing up. It seemed to be exactly the same, except for one key difference. The storefronts looked the same, some of the businesses had changed, but while I lived there, businesses changed in the storefronts frequently. The parade was the same, with fire trucks and the floats from the local politicians and the Shriners with their little stunt cars, I had actually marched in the first Moxie Day parade when I was a kid, and many subsequently, and then I went and watched it after that as an adult. And really there was nothing in it, or in the festival, that was different. Except, except for the people. As the song goes, they knew not my name, and I knew not their faces. My dad was with me, Thankfully, so people would make the connection at times that I was his eldest son and therefore someone that some of them knew to know. And I ran into an old friend actually from elementary school who I hadn't seen since, checking IDs at a bar downtown, which when we were kids was an ice cream shop. An ice cream shop that figures largely in the Moxie story. But for the most part, I was in a very familiar landscape, surrounded by amiable strangers. The older faces that I searched for, many of them had died. And other people, other familiar faces had moved away, like me, to be replaced by new folks. But it was still great to be home. It was great to be in Lisbon Falls on that day, and I loved every minute of it. The kids will back me up on this. I had a great time, and they were only slightly embarrassed because nobody knew us. But at the same time, I knew that I was a rank stranger. That the time I had spent in this town was in the past and no longer the lived reality of the residents. And it was no more their lived reality than mine today. I thought of Jesus, actually, in that passage from the Bible today. And of course, his old hometown, for different reasons, was a little more uh, confrontational, shall we say. His reasons for being in town were different from mine, too. And the welcome was hostile. I was welcomed 
back into town. Everyone was super friendly, whether they knew me or not. But in Nazareth, Jesus got run out of town and they tried to throw him over a cliff. There had to be that element of strangeness for him too. Possibly even more than for me. Jesus had also been gone for a while after all, and over that time things had changed. Some people in Nazareth recognized him, some weren't so sure, and no one seemed to have liked what he had to say. Because he had changed. Jesus had changed too, and brought a new and different perspective with him. And now he was speaking truths that they were not prepared to hear. A message that would upend their lives, that would disturb the order of things. That would challenge that very system that brought him up. Jesus, to them, represented that strangeness that the word stranger implies. Not playing by the rules. Possibly not even knowing the rules. The many norms and mores that no doubt provided the glue that held the town together. He had forgotten his place, Jesus had. He was making waves. And even if we have lived in the same place for our whole lives, we know what that is like. We know what Jesus was going through. It is a part of human life to not know what we are supposed to do in the midst of others. To feel isolated and alone. To feel and be judged for who we are and what we believe. If only we knew better, we say to ourselves, in our low moments. If only we knew better. If only we truly belonged, like they do. If only I and they were not rank strangers to each other. Now we've all had experiences like this, and maybe for a short time, like on vacation, it feels kind of fun or exciting to be the stranger. Or maybe there are times when we're not home and we think we're blending in, which honestly never really works. But in the psalm and in the gospel, being the stranger was frustrating at best. Frustrating and unnecessary. For all it would take to no longer be that stranger would be a little understanding and flexibility. An understanding of everyone's strangeness of everyone's strangeness. And then, if this active understanding happened in community, in a town like Nazareth or Natick, embodying the self-awareness of radical hospitality, if this happened, then no one would have to be the stranger anymore. And Rank Stranger, we hear the words, it's a beautiful day when I meet them in heaven, and no one will be a stranger to me. It's a beautiful day when I meet them in heaven and no one will be a stranger to me. No one will be a stranger in the commonwealth of heaven. Now as I mentioned earlier in the service, this song gets at one of the basic principles of universalism. The idea that in essence we are unified. That in whatever the ideal world is, whatever terms like heaven might actually mean, no one will be excluded. All will be welcome. Everyone will belong and be known. The challenge of this faith and the challenge for us today though is to believe that and to live like we believe that. To remember our own disconnection, our own strangeness when dealing with the unknown, and to encounter each other with the stranger within ourselves. To encounter each other with the stranger inside ourselves. Now that's not easy. We all feel more comfortable in life when surrounded by familiar people and familiar things, when we feel we have a place. But at the same time, it is fear of the stranger in ourselves and of becoming the stranger elsewhere. The potential for that comfortable world we want 
changing is that fear that makes us struggle with strangers in our midst. We see this truth in the politics of our time over issues like immigration. We see this truth in the self-segregated suburbs that we choose to live in. We see this in close-knit friend groups, and we see it in churches, in churches that somehow take pride both in being welcoming and in everyone knowing each other. Both in being welcoming, yet everyone knowing each other. In Rank Stranger, the world of perfect unity happens after death. But I don't believe that it has to be that way. I believe that we can make a better world right here, and that it begins with us, the strangers, making room in our hearts and minds in churches and communities for the other strangers around us. So let's take a moment to recognize the strangeness in ourselves and to commit to a forever deepening practice of welcome. In the spirit of prayer and meditation, we all this house. <laughs>